Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are going to be looking at something quite literally wicked, and that is the Wicked Engine. Now, this is something I looked at in the past, uh, about a year or two ago. Uh, it's kind of a combination of things. It's an open source cross-platform rendering framework. So if you want to create your own game engine, you can use the Wicked Engine to do that. In fact, that's exactly what Game Guru Max, that's coming very soon uh, from the game creators, they are using Wicked Engine as their underlying renderer. On top of that, there's a set of tooling built on top of this guy that gives you capabilities, uh, place level levels, see how things load, you can set up Lua scripts, and so on. And here you can actually see the Wicked Engine Editor in action. Uh, and what you're going to be shocked by is just the amount of uh, options that we have uh, to power this guy. So we're going to see here, we're just kind of looking at uh, a level that I loaded off of Sketchfab. Uh, it's a GLTF kind of uh, level that you can just simply load it up, bring it in, and here you go. And you can see uh, the rendering options are pretty staggering. So we come in here, we've loaded the model this way. You can turn physics on and off, profile on and off. You can switch into... Uh, you know, cinematic mode, so there's no UI at all. Uh, you can see an example of how the renderer works. On top of that, there are a number of different renderers here. So example, right now we're using the tiled forward render. We could use a straight up forward renderer, uh, and you can see the frame rate results up here. So we're running 144, which is basically the Hertz refresh rate of my monitor. So we're hitting pretty much full speeds there. We got a deferred renderer option, again, hitting pretty full speed. Tiled forward rendering, uh, tiled deferred rendering, and then we've got a path tracing, and here's where things get a little slower, but this is basically full-on ray tracing at this point in time, and when I say a little slower, I, I actually mean it, it gets quite a bit slower, but there is ray tracing feature and functionality in here. On top of that, with this newest version, uh, there is now DX12 and Vulkan support as well. So you can see over here, you can do things, you can place things in the world, so I could add in a particle emitter and so on. I'm not going to get into those specific details on this one. It's mostly an update video to make you aware that Wicked Engine is out there, and that it added this new support here. You're also going to notice when we get into the uh, the special effects here, we go to post-processing, we got a ton of features we can do here. So we switch things to cartoon, for example. Let's turn ambient occlusion on, jack the power up. We can set the exposure level in our, our world up. We can do eye adaption. We can put motion blur, change the strength, change depth of field here. Uh, probably turn that back off. Uh, chromatic aberration and so on. So you've got all kinds of controls over the post-processing effects and you've got even more control over rendering effects as you can see right here. And I'm not going to get into the, the details of what you've got here, but as you can see, you've got a lot of customizability control over exactly how rendering happens, uh, the number of bounces in your ray tracing, the way the occlusion control happens, uh, global illumination happens, and so on. So you've got a lot of fine-tuned control over how your renderer works. Even, you know, obviously everything you're seeing here, you can use it yourself in your own project. And there's instructions on how to basically build Wicked Engine so that you can embed it in your own app instead of using their tools. Speaking of which, here you can see a typical project. Okay, I'm actually still running. I'll close that down. You see, it's a straightforward Visual Studio project. Just open it up, open the solution, hit F5. So it's super easy to get things up and running. The only catch I actually saw is you're going to want to go ahead and set it to 64-bit. And once that's done, just basically hit F5 with the project you want there, load it up, and there you go. All the source code is available here. As you'll notice, it supports Linux, also supports Universal Windows Platform. If you're wondering about the features and functionality of this guy, oh, I guess I should also mention uh, this is a C++-based project. Uh, as you can see here, all the code is in fact actually documented, which is always nice to see. Um, so we're going to head on over and look at some of the features. This comes from the website. We're going to check out the website in a second. We're going to see a top level view of the kind of functionality that Wicked Engine offers. So you can see here we got DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and Vulkan renderers. Uh, we got fault rendering of true type fonts, uh, image rendering, animation, 2D, 3D space. I'm not sure what any of that actually means. Uh, UDP based networking, uh, meshes, objects, armatures, animations, materials, lights, hit spheres, wind, world info, dynamic cameras ribbon trails, particle systems, etc. And the nice thing is with the GL um the GLTF objects I actually threw at it all just worked, which was nice to see. 3D mesh rendering, skeletal animations, physically based materials, uh, animated textures, normal mapping, displacement mapping, parallax occlusion mapping, real-time planner reflections, cube map reflection, static and real-time reflections, screen space and blurred, uh, Interactive water, Gaussian blur, bloom, edge outline, motion blur, lens flares, light shafts, bokeh depth of field, chromatic aberration, multi-threaded rendering, tessellation, GPU-based particles, soft particles, hair particle systems, graph for grass and vegetation as well, uh, instance rendering, uh, MSAA, FXAA, and temporal anti-aliasing all included, super sampling, deferred shading, directional lights, and cascaded shadow maps, spotlights and shadow maps, point lights and shadow cube maps, uh, soft shadows, bullet physics, rigid body, soft body, 
and 3D Audio X Audio 2. Yeah, it keeps going, by the way. Uh, we got input handling, mouse, keyboard, controller, and touch uh, with raw and X input support. We got controller feedback, vibration, LED, uh, backlogging, so logging support, gamma correction, HDR rendering, resource management, uh, scenes, screen space ambient occlusion, uh, screen space reflection, skin shaders, stencil layering, deferred decals or decals, depending on how you want to say that one, forward decals or decals, uh, color grading, sharpen filter, eye adoption, adaption, uh, Lua scripting, dynamic environment mapping, imposter syst- uh, system, tiled forward rendering, tiled deferred rendering, occlusion culling with GPU queries, texture atlas packing, tiled de- decals, uh, area light, sphere, disc, rectangle, and tube, frame profile, voxel Voxel-based global illumination, huge draw distance support with a reverse, reverse Z buffer, force field GPU simulations, particles, depth buffer <sighs> collisions, uh, ocean simulations, translucent shadows, reflection coast, uh, um, caustics, uh, local parallax corrected environment maps, volumetric light scattering, high, uh, smooth particle hydrodynamic fluid simulations, ray tracing and ray uh, and path tracing on a GPU. As you saw, the performance was a little iffy in my case. I'm running this on a 2070, by the way. Uh, entity component system that oriented design, light map baking, job system, inverse kinematic springs, and terrain rendering. So that is the who's who of features here. So let's head on over, take a look at some of the details. So obviously it's tweeted out, Vulcan and DX12 ray tracing were added. We looked at the uh, release notes that are there. Now we're going to head on over to GitHub. By the way, GitHub did a redesign, and in my humble opinion, it stinks. And from what I've seen from most people, they all think it stinks. Please, GitHub, go back to your old page layout. I can't zoom in any more than this because we have this meaninglessly stupid sidebar on the side. So if I zoom in, it just gets dumb and basically unreadable. Again, GitHub, please go back to the old ways. Uh, so you can see here, Wicked Engine is available up on GitHub. It is under there at here. I'll go ahead and link that down below in the linked article. So you don't need to worry about that. If you do want to grab it and check it out, literally just come on in here, clone it, copy this guy down, clone that down. And if you've got Visual Studio 2019 installed, literally just set it to X64, do a build and you are good to go. You've got some models and scripts to play around with in here, by the way, including the ever famous Sponza model. Uh, we've also got some scripts you can see here. Again, the scripting can be done in Lua. So here you can see like uh, the scripting for moving an object using Lua script. So it, you don't have to work at a C++ level. If you want to make use of Wicked Engine, you can do so entirely using Lua script as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of basically the gist of it. It is under the MIT source license. Uh, there is documentation if, for both scripting and the whole thing. Uh, the documentation is can be a little sparse at times. There's a blog. It's a little out of date. There are some videos on it to show you how to get up and running. So you're not completely on your own. Again, it is really easy to get started. And if you want to go ahead and use this guy in your own project, you can also create it basically as a static library and link it in your own application. The instructions are here. And here is how you go ahead and initialize Wicked Engine. Uh, pretty simple, really. Like you're you're basically just passing in the hwin to it. And then as part of your game loop, you're calling main.run over and over again. Here's, you can see some, some basic usage for having it embedded. So if you want to go ahead and embed this guy, you're going to find it easy. It imports, uh, object files and GLTF 2.0 files. Again, everything I threw at it worked just fine. Um, You've got, uh, again, the, the various different rendering devices here. So DX12 and Vulkan. Uh, you can specify command line arguments to switch between the rendering devices. Uh, yeah. So here you can see some some more details on there. And that is basically the gist of it. We got some screenshots of it in action. Uh, so uh, yeah, that is the Wicked Engine. It just added Vulkan, DX12 uh, ray tracing support. Definitely something I would recommend checking out. Uh, again, it is being used as the underlying uh, rendering engine for Game Guru Max. It is developed from a rendering engineer on the PlayStation team. So there is definitely some uh, knowledge behind this particular engine. And it's also under the MIT source license, which is a very um, liberal, permissive license it allows you to do uh, pretty much what you want. You're waiving, uh, you got to leave the license for that and you're waiving the uh, the creator of responsibility if it causes your computer to explode or, you know, commits crimes or whatever else. So um, yeah, it's a very flexible license, very powerful engine, and it is being used in another game engine that you've heard of out there. So if you're looking for an underlying rendering engine, something like um, Caw, or there used to be the BS framework, it's gone now, BGFX, etc. Also considered the Wicked Engine. And the Wicked Engine also has a ton of tooling layered on top of it. And the cool thing is, once again, if you are using this in um, Visual Studio, 
There's no external dependencies. They are all included in the project. So getting this guy up and running is quite literally a matter of clone it, make sure that your Visual Studio is up to date, switch to X64, do a release or debug build, and then hit F5, and you are off to the races. That is all it takes. And that's something that I really appreciate because a lot of times when I download something like a CMake-based or worse, a Make-based project, and I've got to resolve all the external dependencies myself, it could take me hours and hours and hours just to get something up and running. This one, no external dependencies. Basically, just download it, run it, and build it, and you are off to the races. So that's it. That is the Wicked Engine. Uh, it just got that big update. You can see here the absolute ton of features in this guy. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Or what you know, think of C++ lower-level rendering frameworks in general. And yeah, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.